afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting third round of with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Hill Psych Defender of the Fatherland, off with an exciting one versus one on Holotny Ferma Winter. On the snowy road, somewhere in eastern France, maybe Luxembourg or Belgium, we got here. Paul, AD, and Von Iman finding out here. And we've got Mickey Dotter, which of both players. It is Spec Ops versus Airborne. The cool van photo here for Ivan. With a rifleman here for Paul A D Dot Rifleman in fact. So this early of an airborne company choice is certainly interesting, could indicate he might even plan Pathfinders, but otherwise like the parrot would like to use his anti tank being fifty cups. There's a lot here potential there for Paul A D. And for Nyman obviously could indicate he might be playing Mechanized Regiment into the Command Panther. There might be something else going on there with Von Ivan. But sending out here aggressively to procure the southern half there. He's not going to try and pressure Paul Adi around here, which is certainly interesting. Most players would increasingly do this in Holotnik Armor. But in this case, Paul Adi, though, seeing him off, securing here with a strip of Bart Wyvern, makes it much harder for Fanam to just push through here. It's going to have to take a much longer route than actually achieve such a goal. Folks, going to do their riding in the south, Sturm Punicating onwards, whereas the Kuberwagen is heading backwards to grab a bit of territory there for the fatherland. Rifling north, it's rifling towards the centre. Wants to make sure that uh, Fanani is not trying anything naughty, and that's an interesting way to wire stuff up. Yeah, I'm sure that'll do work. Great, yeah, yeah. You don't happen to used to work for the government before this. Oh, how do you know? Just something about your workmanship. Because they're laying down more barbed wire. More riflemen there on the way. Stand at south here with both players for the most part so far. Cool wagon creeping hit towards the center. Right from the, coming under fire from the cool wagon, the MD34, singing off a few rounds there. Most hitting the wall where the rifle is standing, but a few do make a few impacts. Third round scored out there in the south, securing territory. Sandbags down here from Van Ivan. The position is certainly interesting. Could actually be used against him though if he, say, Paul D holds, he can actually use to make it much harder for Van to push forwards here. So. Interesting, but not to say the most efficient, of course, it does provide more coverage towards here, so, I mean, it's a bit more of a double-edged sword, if you will, double-bladed sword, double-edged blade, anyways, more folks can hit on the way there for from Ivan, standard staff, probably the like will go for more rifle, could consider mortars as well here, though this is the upper commander best with this kind of play there, and the mortars are not going to necessarily find much purchase early on, though, if uh, Phenomena goes from support weapons, the mortars will be great. Of course, you could also be saying up for the lieutenant, the captain, or even, you know, preparing to push out some pathfinders at first opportunity. It'll be interesting to see what exactly happens here. We I mean, normally just don't see an American player go for an airborne doctrinal choice this early into the match. Like, that indicates clearly he's got something in mind with it, not just necessarily dropping in some paratroopers and throwing in some P 47s. I mean, he could still end up doing it, but I'd imagine there's a bit more to the choice than that if he goes for it in like the first few seconds. But I'm still on so slowly moving in, flanking right from the side of the house. And then it's integrated off there, pretty much forces retreat here from Paul A.D. His call upon is now exposed as well, troops are reinforcing. And there's going to be some, uh, some healing needed for these rifles, and that's going to delay his tech if he's planning on that anytime soon. So, Paul A.D. is in a bit of a sticky situation versus Fun Ivan, who's quickly laying down some shooting in as well. And we do get the tech now, he can Captain instead, possibly here getting a set premonition that fire might be meaning for mechanized range, just realizing it is much more common right now with the Luke system, in which case the captain is going to be the better choice. Either way, though, these riflemen are in a really terrible state there for Van Iron of oh, Paul. Problem is, of course, he can't really do much about it since he's taking up there. But it does mean these riflemen will be feeding Van Iron quite a bit of experience and just getting some kills for more or less for free. And just going to have a manpower pack there for Paul. And there you go. We'll be seeing Pathfinders already here with the BG, you know, something as they go right and force back. In the center, we have some pushback with the Sturm Pioneer, their Sturm Gewehrs sounding off nicely. And there we go, mine goes off. Bob and Bobby blown to bits. So looks like Pathfinders are not part here of Paul Lady's plan versus Van Ivan. At least not at this stage, again, the Rifle just are in a wretched state. The lack of ambulance just making things harder here for Van Iven. Oh, no, for, oh, it's making it easier for Van Iven, not uh, easier for Paul, though. So, I mean, you can go for the anti tank gun now because it's more likely to end up think, again, pushing out the ambulance at first opportunity. And you've heard right here for Van Iven to help deal with some of all this uh, Yank infantry and keep it down. Bit more to go in front, calling the ambulance. Bit more to go. 
There we go. Now oh, there we go. There we go. You can call it in. Question is if you will. You could actually use the captain to supervise the ambulance just to force it up much, much faster. Mines on the calf point. Nice work there before Nyman. Nasty, but nice, depending on your perspective, obviously. Fun is in fact pretty close to the looks already, which is obviously for Paul AD pretty bad news. This has definitely not been a very uh, pretty start here for Paul AD. Fun hit hard and he hit ruthlessly. Paul AD here clearly was caught a bit off guard over Fun tactics, possibly also made a few wrong calls here and there, and just the inability to get an ambulance fast, and again just feeding Paul AD of Fun just a lot of cheap kills that way did not, I think, exactly help the situation either. Lucas is on the way, that's going to force Polly to go to an anti tank and because he can't get anything else. Again, he's just been so much short on fuel, plus the ambulance and everything else. I mean, he's going to have to go for the anti tank, he's going to go for it soon. Of course, it does mean he can't call in 50 calibers, anyways, from uh, the doctrine. And of course, in that regard, airborne does give you a lot of flexibility, which you do think has been a bit forgotten over time by some players. We'll see what he ends up with. Oh, he can be healed now. He can get his men into a better condition to fight the crowds. And there you go. M1 anti tank on the way there for Paul, which he desperately needs. But for now, they're keeping up the pressure, relentlessly pushing, hitting, poking, prodding. And there you go. Looks after him. Plans out here for Von Ivan. And the, oh, I don't know. Actually, I forgot to mention the unit names there. Second Panzer Sean versus Paul AD's. 19th infantry division and there we go and to tank it arriving looks pulling hit they're shattering fences in the process probably not intentionally though there you go straight for the right and cluster on the road barely any cover from the looks and he just unleashes a hail of auto cannon fire that wreaks havoc on the right and there you go good hit from the m1 though easily piercing the armor forcing for now there to pull back his uh, light the panzer for now and with this, we can see police switching to the south, and we got the anti -machine, on machine gun being air dropped in here. Bear sense for salt in this situation. For now, they're quickly moving down here to cut off any sudden harassment there from Paulie D. Using the looks, he doesn't have much to worry about there. As Paulie D. strikes with a car point here, cover. Theoretically, whittling away the problem is it's more cover that could be useful for Paulie D. than for Van Iron. There you go, the sandbag shatters, and armor piercing around just puffs them all up. For now, they're committing to more light armor within the first few minutes of the game. A second look, he's feeling bold. There you go. Oh, he's going to raid the base. He could take out the ambulance there. That's going to be pretty bad news there for Paul AD. Ambulances weren't exactly known for their armor protective properties. In this case, though, he can preserve it just by popping out the medics. That's not going to be too bad of a loss. Oh, no, he drives off the looks with his rifle. Courageously getting close there with anti tank rifle grenades just to force the looks away there. But that is a very nasty raid here. And he's going to soon have double Luxus. There you go. On a, there we go. Good hit, good hit. Almost got the Lux, but it will be able to get away, sadly. For Paul AD, the Lux will be able to escape the wrath of America. And there you go. Second Lux out. Double Luxus. Slightly popular with some players, though not all. But again, cancel to get off a good start and then you know, pull into double looks. I mean, this is clearly an all-in move from Fanami. Mean, this is somehow failed. He's going to be quite far behind, but then he gets control of the map so aggressively that even then it's not going to send him far behind by too much. So it's not even that risk of an all-in at the moment. Steel Pine is something special. The fifth cover, Captain moving ahead. Paul O'D, I think, will be very much relying on the Captain and his stock to provide the things he's going to need until he can get back the map here from Van Ivan. Troops setting out. Kuberwagen shattering some fences there. Quickly falling back. My god, Rudolf, you have to be careful. I get splinters everywhere. Well, most in my back on my ass. Which isn't fun. I can tell you that. Big push there. Looks hanging back in the south. I'll want to pull back for repairs. We got repair pioneers for now to ensure that the looks are properly maintained. According to exacting standards, if possible, if not, they just do what usually they could. Well, in some cases, the Germans even send out tanks not even fully and properly maintained. You know, without, say, a functioning threat, they could, you know, occasionally send them in like that. Because they had to. But note that he's trying to mine off the southern approach to make it harder for Vanar just to creep up there without necessarily becoming an easy target. Mortar out here to help a bard. 
Phenomen's patience, and we got a Puma out here for Phenomen. I'm theoretically going to try and take it up, but he's probably feeling so confident right now that the only thing he has to worry about is a light vehicle. In which case, having a Puma out is going to put a stop to that. Paul AD is clearly going to need more than one anti tank gun here, though. And we got radio silence here from Phenomen, and the second Panzer to be shown. Mortar ready. It's gonna probably blast out the machine gun there. Points are down to there we go. 234 dash 2 out here for Fun Ivan. And we got mines being laid down here. Jump out into an awful lot of ramp plus the fifth car they're taking heavy damage almost down to half of a matter of seconds. The machine's in perhaps port here, but it's gonna have to fall back soon enough as the mortar is doing quite a bit of hit there. Down to half health as well. They can't quite punish him from Zorfi, unfortunately, for Paul E.D. Creation's repulsed. Shifting away the fifth cow of the entertainment, of course, that means the other looks in strike. And the question, of course, is how much wears Paul E.D. that Fanon right now has double looks. Fanon here committing to another NG-34. Bazooka's out here for Paul E.D. Further help versus all the German light armor. Now the MG Fed for almost done there. And we got the Puma setting in as well, just firing away. Pretty much really supportive, of course, that Fanon at this stage has a Puma. Charging at the folks on these. M1 moving up. There we go, grenade assault. The real and cross Paul D has gone for spec cops. If you didn't have a clue about that before, another fifth cup here for Paul E D, being air dropped in. Knock it off. It up. I'd say for now, actually lost that opportunity to push in for the fuel plant in the north. I mean, he's got a lot of force. He's either doing something. He's just sitting back here. And one moving up, not more anti tank guns, which is a bit interesting considering there's still a lot of light vehicles about here from Van Hyven. Oh, he got the looks, it looks like Van Hyven wasn't paying attention. Probably also couldn't see the bazookas, they usually pay attention to the icons, not the units themselves in these situations. So, Paul was able to creep up on the looks essentially, right under his nose with a pair of bazookas on top of the anti tank and taking out the looks that before Van Hyven knew what was happening. Now, that's definitely a small victory there for Paul AD, but he's still in a pretty rough situation, victory points wise. He's down to very little here versus Van Hyven. Already, I mean, this is a very rough start here for Paul E.D. Troops in reinforcing, second fifth cover there secured. That means he's now got two heavy machine guns which will put pressure on Van Ivan's troops. But it is very much a steep climb here for Paul E.D., very much a steep climb. And we can see that Van Ivan's committing to another looks. I mean, he could in theory at this stage just begin taking up. It seems like Van Ivan's having a fun time and he's just committing to more light armor. I mean, you can do that. You can do that. Mortar quickly smoking and just hitting, but there you go, got the fifth cover joining in, and there you go, forcing from Ivan's machine and give it to fall back. There it goes, slow pressure. Mortar fire, men pushing up, straight to mine, unfortunately, there for Paul AD. More shifting up north, could try and use the house here to just bombard the looks and the Kublan from the side with the bazookas. Could be quite effective there for Paul E.D. Less person there for Fanon. For His third looks is almost done. Previously they're caught by another machine gun though, should have taken the other path here. Behind the fences, gone up to the back door. Rather than this one. Unfortunately for Paul E.D. could of course be him wanted to do that, but for some reason they just took another path and had that happen. Try some armor piercing around here. There's the looks. Doing this like I'm not gonna bother. 140 left for Paul AD. But still, he is slowly, very slowly pushing back for now. And the question, of course, is if it's fast enough. Ooh. Bit of mistake here by for now. He pushes looks too fast, sadly, for Paul E.D., though he can't quite fully punish it. He's got enough anti tank weaponry nearby to actually destroy the looks and should be able to go in with a damaged engine through the southern roads. Meanwhile, though, Paul D pushing up here, going for the rifle. Fultz gonna there. Some are getting suppressed, some are getting murdered with a grenade assault off here, and oh, 
Mostly dot, MB34 sitting up in the church, Bazooka Fire here trying to pull down for the looks. Needs gonna cover, got Shumpa playing up behind the fifth cover, a lot going on here, a lot going on. Rafa getting suppressed, Fox is suppressed. Almost got another looks there. Could be he gets it, I'd say it's increasingly likely here. Then again, if we can round the corner. Well, who knows? It's any RPG out from the machine in the church. And there we go. Looks down there. It's the second looks here. Paul is able to get his and to tank those down. The intended RPG out from the machine and just tank through most of his stuff there. The mortar is a bit slow here in the process. Rather than up, couldn't get off an anti tank. Rather than it on the Puma. And now finding the North looks number two strikes in here behind Paul AD's lines. And Phenomen is committing to a fourth. A fourth looks. Almost got the Puma. There's still the looks. There's still the looks. Scheiser. Need to get the Bazooka teams in on it. And they also need to get some RPS around the thing on the looks if possible as well. Almost got the Puma there, but it gets away. He gets away. And so does the looks. Oh, does it? Does it? Maybe not. Maybe not. He should be able to get it. And. Just get it. And looks like the machine gun went down as well. For now, he's standing heavier losses in his rather reckless and sellers' assaults to flush out the Americans from the area. Makes a lot of light armor gone. Plus a machine gun give team. And a mortar got wiped. This is huge. This is big for Paul Lady. I mean, he's really low on victory points. Need to do something about that. But these kind of casualties in Fernand is not going to be something he just easily bounces back from. Because right now, then Paul Lady's got three machine guns, which means he can keep a lot of uh, Fernand's troops in check. He's also got a decent amount of tank weapons. So he should be able to begin extending his uh, presence on the field more. Looking to in the south is where Fernand strikes first. Getting from the normal, got Kubag nearby. Fourth looks almost done. The Suga team's bringing that pushing away. The Puma and the looks are all going to fall back there. If he gets hit with an anti tank rather than the Bazooka off the hits, it's going to be a loss for it. 75 victory points left for Paul. Oh, there we go, there we go. Ah, he doesn't have munition for the anti tank rifle grenade. The looks escapes. Few more hits though, few more hits. Got the cool wagon up north though. Further increasing the mobility of Van Ivan. Healing reinforcement. Another truck there. He's finally going to take up. He's finally realizing that at this stage, Paul D can easily counter the Luxus. It's rather than just feeding more light armor and reconnaissance vehicles into this meat grinder. He has to go for something heavier. Rather than need to retreat though. Sending in a larger force here with the Pilfert machine gun, some riflemen, the mortar as well. All right, guys, any crouts I want dead. Otherwise, we're gonna run out of victory points. And what's the victory point, Sarge? Just shut up, Carl. Shots fired, rather than pulling ahead. Flares off him for Van Ivan. Mortar getting him actually two there for Paul ED. That's pretty good. He's only getting back some map control here, having inflicted quite some losses there for Van Ivan. But again, victory points wise, he really can't afford many more, shall we say, uh, slip ups there, any accidents. There you go, looks into a nice pair of bazookas. Causing quite a bit of harm there. Up north here. Struggling with the Northern Victory Point. Down to 65. Paul, you believe, is taking up. He's going to push out for some medium armor. Healing reinforcement. Pushing out again. And the South Holes are flanking up. Machine is not quite ready for that. That is a fifth guy in quick position. But there he goes. Just going to pop into the house anyway. So it's too late there. Means he can't defend the Southern or the Center Victory Point very easily. And he's pushing for the Northern Hills Bazooka team. There we go. Pushing away the looks of the Bazookas. Major out. There's a major development there. 
for Pauli D versus Von Iron, who's Schwer Panther to quarters. No, he's actually not going for He's going for the Battle of Headquarters. I mean, some Obersland right now would be a pretty good choice there for Von Iron, but I said he's probably going to just stick to the Command Panther. Which in some ways is going to be nice, but the problem is right now for Pauli D, he doesn't actually have a lot of tanks which can see his film. I mean, he's decent versus infantry. The problem is, Orbis will die in a Panther Force right now would be a much better choice there for Von Iron than a Command Panther. Grenade Assault here. Nicely locked. But ultimately, the folks have to fall back. He's down to 40 feet, though. Machine gun holding up here. we got more flares down. And we got here big push with the infantry away, but they're supported by two light tanks. Note he's sending them in damaged. Clearly, Fanami is going to take some bigger risks there, thinking he can get away with this. But I promise he makes you know, any misjudgments. It's going to cost him dearly because Luxus cannot withstand a lot of damage right now. Machine gun tanks with the German infantry. Got grenades off here. One hell of a throw, but not quite enough. And the tanks are no interest in fact they fire up north. He expecting Port Fanon to strike there. Looks to continue head here with no anti tanks defenses to support them. They just lay down a murderous storm of fire against any troops moving in. They're rifling in. Anti tank and almost there we go. On the field. And does he get it? L lost something. Got the looks. Got the looks. One hell of an anti tank raft grenade. Destroyed another Fanon's. Like tanks, he's trying to go for the wipe there. But Suka team's going up, they're eventually free. And there we go, main gun out, main gun out. He should be able to get for the anti tank gun. It's gonna try and escape here, but I don't think it's gonna. Oh, it's gonna work out. Close one, though. Close one. And right now, that means actually Paul has got the larger force than Van Ivan. Now, the question is, can he actually take advantage of it? Can he push far enough? Well, of course, maintain control of the machine uh, victory points. Of course, he's got several machine guns to do. In fact, it's almost like they're forming up some small line of their own. Here, here, and there. Plus a mortar base providing fire support for both victory points. So, tactically, I'd say that's a decent setup there for Paul AD. They might probably want to consider some mines in there to further make it harder for Fanon just to push in when he tanks. Now, Fanon's got the southern point defender with the Puma and his full skin of the escort. Paul AD here. I think it actually benefit from some BARs and the rifle and besides anti tank mines. Just, you know, further make it harder for for Iman to break through. He can soon go for Sherman. I don't think he's more likely to end up with the Jackson since he's going to be worried about the Command Panther. Anything bigger there from Van Ivan. It was hard to work there on his remaining looks. He's lost a lot of light tanks. I mean, that's uh, probably a uh, good platoon or two that's just sort of gone up in flames there. Ach, mein Gott, sei Dummkopf. I told him, sir, reconnaissance tanks, not tanks. Idiot. Rafa and Gerson sending out there. For now, I'm moving ahead here for the same punches there, occupying the church for the bazookas. Rafa nearby as well. Cool, moving up there. Go direct hit from the anti tank gun. And his grenades flashing through the church. Bit of a wrong pop there. And there he goes, gets the Puma. Another significant loss there for Van Iman. These forces are being heavily depleted. Van Iman, I think I might get a 12 comfort versus Paul. And Paul there has played like a smooth operator and just waited for all these mistakes. Just punished them as hard as he could. Holy smokes, he just lost the entire raft to them. Grenades. Severe casualties. Machine gun holes in a bad spot, by the way. There gets wiped. This is... Oh, goodness. Almost got to wipe them with a mortar round, though. Sherman on the way there for Paul. A.T. Sherman on the way. Stalling here around the victory point, he has to retreat. He could maybe call in the cutter strike using the major on the point. Oh, he's going to go for the machine gun. Shh, not this good. He needs to kill us, but they got another machine gun up here in the north. Could get a wipe here. Oh. Good hit there from the mortar. 16 kills. Ever closer to Vectin 3. But I'm going for Stuka the first now. He's just really clean in intent, just trying to push through no matter the cost. Further delaying his arm, which actually means Paul AD's Sherman tank just got a lot more valuable if there's no Panther to stop it. And remember, Fanon's got no other end tank than this. I mean, the only sort of this about problem here for Paul AD though is the Stukas of Fus is halfway down. And once the Sherman hits gets revealed, Fanon can cancel the Stukas of Fus up for the Command Panther. But for some reason, he doesn't see to realize he just doesn't care. I mean, that's a really good spot there for Paul AD to get back in the fight and push, really begin to push hard against Fanon. 38 points left though. Good hits there, good hits. Sherman sitting out, 50 cover there. Slowly getting done. 
Or at least he should be earning the 50 out of Yolks. Really should be doing something with his munitions. He might even want to just consider laying up some fighting positions to defend here in the northern points so he can free up the machine guns for other duties. Oh, there we go. Crash the unit hard. Ruthlessly. And shatters the side of the church as well. The charge! It's a church! I'm sure the Catholics just run him over. Of course, they're taking a nasty hit. And there you go, Strugas of Usat, meaning he actually has no counter here to the Shan for now. That is a big plus there for uh, Paul D and Island again for now. Miscalculate, doesn't care, or forgot. All the way, there's a Shaman again. He's got a Panzer Shrek to stop it. And he's just fighting high close rounds and everything for now. And Scott, he's really bad news for him. But again, great news for Paul D. Unless he does something really unfortunate. Almost got the Sturm Pannies. That could very well be the only anti tank weapon he's got left. That'd be critical. He's pulling back the Sherman here from serious repairs for now and cancelling. They go for the command panel. Being the end, it's going to be need more time for Paul Lee Sherman. Which has already managed five kills. Big push in for now into the north. You got machine gun in the way though. Push into the south might not be a half back thing there for Paul. And yeah, he's even got the rear since assisting with the tank repairs. Definitely, I think, a right idea here. And then quickly switching out to a fighting position to help defend. Also pretty good idea. I mean, again, he's got a lot of munitions. Fighting positions here can be a definitely good way of using them. It's going to make it hard just for, for now just rush in. But he's going to need some support up north very fast. Because that machine gun is going to be finding a very desperate fight here against the last push there from uh, Van Ivan. The south there, major spot of the looks. That's going to be a major white. And there goes second Sherman here for Paul. Just pushing what he's got now. 38 lost a um, unit there. And he's might lose the machine gun there to Van Ivan. Final position going out. And there goes Sherman strikes going for the machine gun. Of course, he's going to get panzer fast a lot. I don't think he cares at this stage. He just wants to get close as possible, do as much damage as possible. Possibly get some wipes. But he lost the northern victory point. He has to reclaim it. You can see more troops being sent southwards. Second Sherman almost done. Fifth color covering. You can just smoke it with the Sherman though. Allowing the infantry to get close. Or you can just try and shoot it. All the way. Second Sherman over. Last car one hit. He's going to need the Sherman in number two there, I think, possibly. And again, it might be dangerous, but not now since again, there's a high possibility of a command plan at any time soon. 30 points left here. 30 points left. Rather than close being annihilated by the looks. Grenade assault. Oh dear, against the machine gun, but there you go. Avoids it. Good work, good work there by Paul E.D. Command Panther finally mobilized. T. Shaman going in. But there's a command panther on the way. It's going to be pretty risky for him to extract it. There we go. Got the looks though. Command panther spotted. Then again, so it's the Stukas of Fus. You could also just realize, alright, I might never make it. Just go for the Stukas of Fus instead. And that might be in fact what he's doing here. Or well, he's just taking a really unexpected path. I don't know, it's hard to say exactly what he's doing. He's got the Sherman Panther down to half health. He's got some really lucky hearts that hits there for the front line in the end, though. I don't think he's got a chance of escaping again. I think he's just trying to go for the Stukas of Fusa. Oh! oh. Air support called in. Sherman's. I got abandoned! The lucky bastard! There we go, Command Panther saying so hits it from the rockets, but just not enough. Oh dear, Paul here might be getting all confident himself despite being at 30 points. He might try and go here for a killing blow, rushing everything in from the Sherman into the base here. I would not recommend that. It looks like he's just going to use the Sherman to watch over the other Sherman being repaired. That's definitely a much better move. He's even popping out his own crew here. Bit risky to do so at the moment, bit risky. I can see what he's doing. He's just thinking to afford the critical repairs and quickly get the other one moving. Clever move there by Paul Eddie. Very clever move. Allowed him to quickly get the Sherman out of there. 
And there you go, Fanclub is carrying at the centre victory point, even as Fanarman flashes all his men into it. Two coming up to flank, but there we go, we finally got some pair tools up for Lady. They just need some upgrades for them. And there you go, Stugas is firing. RDA's position, this is Shams, who can be hit there by it. Oh, that lucky fan position does go down, but the Sherman is still intact. And a full rat here for Fanarman in the centre of the second panzer video. Sion's troops are slaughtered. He just needs to fix up the Sherman and get back in action. Addition reaction to help just crew the Sherman. Good move. About the fifth coming up, we could use the shed to defend with, but that's also easily collapsed, so maybe not. Paul D though here, 30 victory points left, but he's managed one hell of a combat against Van Ironman. Panther there going for the paratroopers. Doing 53 points left for Van Ivan. Need to go for about saying in a Sherman alone against a command panther like that. Directly on the Sherman. And the other Sherman is good to go as well. Lots of shots being fired, then more rounds, everything else. Come on, Panther, we got in second opening up, needs armor piercing rounds, needs armor piercing rounds. Sherman, though, went up and smirking the anti tank on the crew, but super fine, and the command Panther almost got it. Damaged engine. Switching over to armor piercing rounds, he's probably going to try and flank in, destroyed. He might have a chance here. That you should probably try and smoke it from the area right in front. Oh, sending in the rifle, got the spot ahead. Shot bounced, shot bounced. Oh, he's going to get Panther fast, the damaged engines, and can't use to get up behind the command Panther. He might still have a chance though. Uh, and he gets it, he gets the command panther. Calls in another Sherman. Big win here for Paulie D versus Von Ivan. Machine gun there. Our recruit by his remaining student pioneer scored. That means until he gets out some other armor. He's got no anti tank weapons. That is massive. I mean, he has to rely on panther fast like Kevin Levers. Machine gun there secured as well. We got the Stugas of Fuzz left, but. Oh dear. Machine gun, though, white on the tree. They could not outrun the Wehrmacht's rockets. Machine gun being rushed northwards. Need to pull back the Sherman further. Oh dear. Machine gun repulsed. Now the Panzer Faust. There you go, second or oh, third Sherman on the way. What does it mean the fourth Sherman? Petrum ring up, sadly no upgrades here for Pauly D. I mean they're still good for that upgrade, but they just become so much better with them. Machine gun wiped, oh dear. Bad like that. Second Sherman rushing southwards first. But it's gonna to need to get into the centre as fast as possible there. To clear up the Germans. And go Fipka being flanked here by Van Arman's plucky troops. He's down to 29. There you go. Veteran three heroic machine gun crew just tears through the false gun. And he's pinning it down in a matter of seconds. He's using the Sherman to grab the southern victory point. Slightly risky if he's not paying attention there all the time. He can go for the Thompson and the paratroops. I definitely recommend him just going for any weapon right now. Thompson's could work. I mean... They are quite effective, particularly then use tactical of salt, in which case you can really just wipe some stuff. For now, and makes off with a mortar. Look, I got this thing. I think it's a Granatenwerfer. They just look so funny. A Kettenwerfer on the way there. Sherman good to go. Other one moving ahead there. Two things in Norfolk, no upgrades there. 
Fifth character stopping another folks can this squad easily. Faults and kills. Chance being heading needs to be careful not to push too far ahead there recklessly. But certainly if you can pressure for now, I mean inches a little bit more defensive, that'd be great for just defending the victory points. Panther fast there. Oh, he's gonna end up with a damage ending that Sherman again. Yup. Seven kills, quick sitting out repairing. 26 points left. Stukas was ready to fire. Shooting around the calf point. Damaging the other Sherman. We got a cannon this time around. We got a smoke screen off. Very good, very good. We might still end up losing a Sherman here because he got, I think, too confident. Pushed to fire with the Shams and forget, failed to properly support with infantry. Definitely not good there for Paul AD. Troops there getting shot at. Blasted into smithereens. As Paul AD tries to salvage his armored force here. But he is nonetheless also blunting quite a bit of their Phenomen's forces. He will not be able to push very much further here. So as long as he doesn't lose any of the tanks, Paul AD should still be in, I think, a pretty good shape here as a Von Ivan. There we go. Pops in. And successfully pushes back the machine gun. Still not great. I mean, he could be planning to, like, light machine guns would be good, but I just think he should go for whatever he can as soon as possible. Now the Sherman over there for Paul AD. Folks, they're firing away 15 kills. Challenge being repaired. 26 versus 20, 222. 219. Shaman quickly flying back to avoid getting further panther fasted. And then could be a bit too late. No. Second Sherman also good to go. And third one arrives. Paulie now has got three Shermans up versus Fenivans nil. Virtually two only Sherman. That's definitely bad news for Van Ivan's troops. Since more accuracy with the high explosive runs is just really not good for infantry. Sherman being repaired again. Setting two Shermans down here in the south. We've got a nearby, but that's going to be likely swarmed by the Shermans, maybe. And we, there we go. Prepared to with Browning light machine guns. Okay, now very good trying to flank it with the Sherman. We got the rear sun going down. Infant being headed north as there goes. Sherman was in to sneak in a few hits. Other Sherman moving in as well. And a full wipe there against Van Ivan. Not good. Not good. Corpses in the snow. And there we go. More fault of this being obliterated here by the Sherman's high close rounds. And the Arcad now for getting in Lily. This is just an, an absolute nightmare there for Phenomenon in the second Panzer to shown. As Paul E.D. just continues to shatter him. Mortal crew pushed back. Picking up the third Sherman. Like Kevin being destroyed. We got a Command Panther number two out here. But for now, the question is, will it be enough? I mean, there's still a lot of anti-tank rooms out here from Pauly D, and plus several shamans, so a command panther under the least fortunate circumstances could easily quite quickly find himself just, you know, destroyed. Sigurdsson is rushing in with that support here. Go, both shamans firing, shots bouncing. Hundred thirty three versus twenty six got the Stukas just unleashing hell again. With eleven mate kills to his name. Nice little star. And he's wrecking like Kenner just tonight to front I'm he's got no intention of using it. Looks 
There we go, Command Panther going in, but again, he's extending, and more importantly, the rear is exposed. There you go, Holy taking a nice deep flank here to pretty much just hit the Command Panther from the rear, assuredly. Very nice move, there you go, rear hits, rear hits, really good flank there for Holy D, really good flank, pretty much minimizes any chance of the Command Panther they're surviving. Getting some black hits there for the French Llama. Hit the house instead. And there we go. Long range hit. Penetrates the Panther. Cooking off the munitions. Being for now and I would say very much dead in the water. Like the Bismarck wants his rod to take that. And there you go. GG. Well played. And absolutely amazing. Which come back there from Paul A.D. against Van Ivan. Really turning the game around there. I mean, Van Ivan was really clutch winning with all those loops in just the early play, but Paul was able to just stabilize, playing a very cool and calm game, and just turned around there against Van Ivan and just winning really well. I mean, that was just absolutely spectacular. It was a really well played there with Paul A.D., well played with Van Ivan. I'm not entirely sure if I agree with the assessment he should have gone for the Stukas was earlier, but I mean, are there some fast tech? They could also have gotten some orbs, and I think would have been great, but. Uh, in the end, that is his assessment and that is mine. But either way, a really good match here on Holot Defermer. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe, like, you know, share, comment. Of course, do subscribe. Remember to press the little bell as well. Otherwise, YouTube, you know, it's not going to be very keen on just telling you about new videos. And if you like, do consider supporting by pledging on Patreon or donating by PayPal. The links in the video description. This is Imperial LinkedIn. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye.